Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, we continue uh, our uh, lecture uh, on the topic of uh, <coughs> Islamic uh, management, and uh, now we have come to uh, the principles and standards of uh, Islamic management. <coughs> In this uh, series two, we will we will further discuss uh, on this uh, subtopics, inshallah. And the third one is competence. This means the quality of being adequately or well qualified physically and intellectually. It refers to having uh, the required ability, knowledge, or skill for proper management. A person is only competent when he or she has attained and maintained an adequate level of knowledge and skills and applies that knowledge effectively in managing the resources. A manager is required to have adequate knowledge, managerial skills and wisdom in order to have effective and efficient management capabilities. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and appointed him as his vicegerent on earth, Allah equipped him with knowledge and capabilities to identify and name things so that he could properly and effectively manage the bestowed resources on the earth. Allah says in the Quran meaning, <coughs> Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I am going to create a vice children on earth. They said, What? Will you place therein one who will make mischief therein and shed blood? And we do celebrate your praises and glorify your holy name. He said, Surely I know what you know not. And he taught Adam the names of all things. Then he presented them to the angels and said, Tell me the names of those if you are right. They said, Glory to you. We have no knowledge but that which thou hast taught us. Surely thou art the knowing, the wisdom. He said, O Adam, tell them their names. When he had told them of their names, Allah said, Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of heaven and earth, and I know what you reveal and what you conceal? Al-Baqarah, verse 30 to 33. <coughs> Islam requires a very competent and suitable person should be appointed to the suitable place or post where he or she has relevant knowledge and expertise. In other words, the person must possess the right qualifications and skills for the right position. This can be learned from Prophet Musa's salam story. Al-Quran says meaning, said one of the damsels, O oh, my dear father, engage him on wages. Truly the best of men for thee to employ is the man who is strong and trusty or reliable. Surah Al-Qasas verse 26. The female recommended to her father that he should employ Prophet Musa alayhi salam as uh, he possessed two best qualities, that is strength and trustworthiness. Nepotism and favoritism should be avoided. Favoritism leads to ineffective and inefficient management of resources and that is considered cheating and deception. It is a betrayal of trust to appoint an incompetent and unqualified person to a responsible post. Likewise, it is injustice for him or her to accept the offer, knowing well that he or she is not qualified. Ali <coughs> Ali bin Talib radiyallahu an counsel al-Ashtar al-Nakhi radiyallahu an Prophet's cousin and son-in-law Ali bin Abi Talib radiyallahu an counsel al-Ashtar al-Nakhi radiyallahu an who was one of his governors to fill the position with the best mind the most competent and qualified one he says choose the best of your subjects in your view for the office of arbitration between people. The one who is fully aware of the issues of litigation. 
a person with whom the adversaries cannot quarrel nor persist in their depravity, but would turn back to the truth if it is proved. A man who is not greedy and is more deliberated and analytical in controversial matters, one more inclined to prove than subjectivity, one, one more inclined to prove than subjectivity, one who is less likely to be annoyed with adversaries' complaints, one who is more patient to inquire into the matters, one who is more inclined to the truth if it is appears not influenced by appearance or the performance and excitement of his adversaries. For muhasabah or accountability. Muhasabah is defined as a self-control that enables a person to judge his or her deeds or attitudes for which he or she will be asked in the hereafter. <coughs> <coughs> The sense of accountability inspires Muslim managers as well as workers to do extremely well in their productions and services. The Holy Quran makes it known that every single individual is responsible and accountable for his or her deeds. Every soul will be held in pledge for his deeds. Al-Mudassir verse 38. Al-Quran further says meaning, then Shall anyone who has done an atom's of the weight of good see it? And anyone who has done an atom's weight of evil shall see it. Surah Al-Zalzala, verse 7 to 8. Verily, no bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another, that man can have nothing but what he strives for. Surah An-Najm, verse 38 to 39. Since the, early, since the earlier day of Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had always employed the principle of accountability, check and balance to supervise the income and expenditure of the provinces and their officers. Following his predecessor's practice, Caliph Omar ibn Khattab radhiyallahu an employed the principle learned from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and emphasized the importance of self-accountability. In his statement, he said, "Judge yourself before you are judged." and prepare for the day of judgment remember that accountability in the world hereafter in the world of hereafter is easier for in the world is easier for the who for he who accounts for his conduct in the world remember that uh, accountability in the hereafter is easier for he who accounts for his conduct in the world the importance of responsibility and accountability the importance of responsibility and accountability is also illustrated by Ibn Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab. On one hot summer day, he ran after a camel, which escaped to return it to Baitulman. When Ali ibn Abu Talib saw him and said to him that he had humiliated the caliphs who came after him, Umar then replied to Ali and said, Do not blame him because he would be accountable for it and everything entrusted to him on the day of judgment. <clears throat> 5. Muraqabah or supervision. This is one of the vital principles of management in Islam. It means proper supervision, surveillance, control and inspection. Supervision is <coughs> supervision <coughs> is defined as the innermost feeling that one gets from respecting the fact that the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever seeing, ever watching on every person at all times and places. It is obligatory upon every Muslim to be Allah conscious in all of his or her activities. A Muslim should execute the work that is entrusted to him or her with utmost perfection, having in mind that the Supreme Supervisor, any Allah, watches him even though he or she cannot see the Almighty. Sense of being diligent should always be borne in mind as it can be deduced from the following words meaning, and say, work righteousness, soon will Allah observe your work and his messenger and the believers and ye will be brought back to the novel of the invisible and the visible, and he will tell you what he used to do.
Surah Tawbah verse 105. Supervision can be observed from two directions, self-supervision and supervision over others. The former takes place when a person checks whether he or she is on the right track or the other side of the fence. While the latter is to check or oversee others, the people who were given tasks to be executed. Through supervision, the manager will be able to ascertain how the, the assigned work has been carried out. This will provide room for appreciation of the task that has been rightly executed and also renders an opportunity to amend or suggest corrective measures in cases of error. So supervision is one of the key principles in Omar ibn al-Khattab administration. Even though he used to grant his governors and agents free reign in their given tasks, he was very strict in supervision. One day he asked those who were around him, What do you think if I were to appoint over you the best one I could find? Then command him to be just. Would I have done what is required of me? They said yes. He said no not until I see how he does it and whether he will do what I have commanded him or not. <clears throat> it was also reported that Omar radiallahu an says, Allah is testing you through me and is testing me through you and he has kept me alive after my two companions are gone. None of your affairs that I witness will I let anyone deal with and none of your affairs that I do not witness but I will strive hard to ensure that they are dealt with. If the governors do well, I shall reward them. But if they do badly, I shall punish them. 6. Ihsan, Benevolent Ihsan means striving to reach the best standards of performance in any circumstance or situation. It represents excellence, graciousness and benevolence. In Islam, Ihsan is a Muslim responsibility to obtain perfection or excellence in all aspects of life such as in worship. We should worship Allah as if we see Him, as if we are in His presence. And although we cannot see Him due to the belief that Allah is not made of materials, we undoubtedly believe that He is constantly watching us and aware of everything that we are doing. This definition comes from the hadith known as Hadith Jibril salam, in which Prophet Muhammad salam, states, Ihsan is to worship Almighty Allah as though you see Him <coughs> and, and if you cannot see him, then indeed he sees you. Ihsan is a comprehensive concept that covers all human affairs, whether it is about one's relationship with Allah, interaction with people, or fulfilling social obligation. When it is applied to one's relationship with Allah, it represents excellence in servitude to Allah. So that a person performs his servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is right in front of him, keenly observing his performance. Naturally, when we act with a consciousness that we are being observed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our performance is going to be the most sincere and the most excellent, just as people perform better when they are being watched by the superiors, supervisors, managers, or even best friends and family members. The most important aspects of Ihsan are giving, showing love, patience, and forgiveness. In line with this, Al-Quran says, meaning those who spend in the will of Allah, in prosperity and in adversity, who repress their anger and who forgive people. And Allah loves the muhsinin, yani those who practice Ihsan. Al-Imran verse 134. Prophet Muhammad wasallam has also been reported to have said, meaning, Allah has ordered you to complete every action in a better way. When you slaughter animal, do it in the best way. So every one of you should sharpen his knife and let the slaughtered animal die comfortably. 7. Strong will and self-determination A manager should have a very strong will and self-determination. Muslim managers in particular are highly encouraged to have strong will and self-determination to achieve the management goals. Strong will should also be supported with tawakkul, yani trust in Allah. Almighty Allah says, meaning, when thou hast taken a decision, put thy trust in Allah, for Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. Surah Al-Imran, verse 159. Prophet Muhammad also has been reported to have said, the strong believer is better 
and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer, while there is good in both. Selflessness. Holders of public office should act solely in terms of the public interest. They should not do so to gain financial or other benefits for themselves, their family or their friends. Managers should think about what the company, organization or society will benefit or gain from him or her before thinking of what he or she will benefit from the company or society. However, interest should be in two ways. It should be give and take. As an employee protects the interests of the company, the company or employer also has to protect the interests of its workers. It was reported that Omar ibn Abdul Aziz used to write on the right angle of his office's, office's application. Write less with public papers and pen, waste less ink, and no illegal facilities will be achieved by any means. Inshallah, we will continue uh, our lecture in series 3. With that, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.